Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney magic. Whether they be singers, actors, Imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de doo day. I'm excited to welcome this week's Tierra Talk Show guest, Ruben Aquino, to the show. Welcome, Ruben. Hi, Tammy. Glad to be here. It really is a pleasure to have you on the show. You know, I've seen you so many times on the behind the scenes featurettes on Disney DVDs and VHS tapes. So this is like a really a wonderful treat for me because I finally get to speak with you in person. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I hope I can make it interesting. Of course. Are you kidding me? I'm, I'm like, I'm a very big fan of your work. You're a wonderful animator. And one of your first Disney projects was the Black Cauldron. Can you talk a little bit about Ooh, what yeah. happened before the Black Cauldron? Like, what made you get into the animation process, and how did it lead you to the Black Cauldron? Well, it, it was sort of a long roundabout, uh, crooked road uh, from... Actually, I started out as an anime... Uh, I'm sorry, an architecture major in college, uh, but I graduated in 1975, so I had to find another career real quick because nobody was hiring in the ar- architectural studios. So um, I wound up in Hawaii, Honolulu, where my parents had moved. Um, so I needed a place to stay, so that's where I wound up. Um, and it, that was like uh, uh, jumping from the frying pan to the fire, so so to speak. Uh, I couldn't find work there at all. Um, so um, I wound up taking a job in uh, a print shop in the graphics department. There were three of us upstairs in the print shop. And I did that for a few years. And finally, I... Um, got a tip that there was a small animation studio in Honolulu that had just moved from Los Angeles, and they were looking for trainees. And uh, so I applied for that job. I had done no animation at all. I loved um, Disney animation growing up. Uh, I actually grew up in Okinawa, uh, which is now part of Japan, but back then it was U.S. administered territory. And uh, we um, actually had uh, Disney's World of Color on TV, except we saw it on black and white. TV. <laughs> and anyway, so I loved all the Disney stuff uh, growing up. Uh, I had not done any animation. Uh, I had maybe done a little bit of animated stick figures in my notebooks in high school, but that was about it. Um, so I tried for that position. Uh, it was a trainee position, so um, uh, I did get it. Um, and uh, so they trained me. That was my first exposure to uh, Disney anim- style animation. The uh, people who, the principals, um, who owned the studio, uh, Fred and Kimmy Calvert, actually uh, worked at Disney back in the 50s. And I guess they were like uh, assistant animators or animating assistants. Um, and uh, so uh, Kimmy Calvert was the one I worked with mostly, and she taught me all the uh, basic tricks of the trade, <laughs> the Disney style of animation. So I did a little bit of everything. That was like going to school for me, working at a small animation studio. So I did uh, some uh, cleanup, some in between, some uh, a little bit of rough animation, um, uh, ink and paint. Um, I shot camera. <laughs> uh, I did some background layout. So a little bit of everything. Uh, and so that was a great education for me. And then I, um, the studio had to fold up, um, and they decided to go back to um, Los Angeles after a couple of years. It just wasn't enough enough work in Honolulu. So. They said, well, we're going back, but you're welcome to come with us to Los Angeles if you'd like. So I said, sure. So I wound up in Los Angeles in 1980, and um, I worked for about a year at Hanna-Barbera Studios. Anyway, uh, I was not doing animation at H&B. I was doing mostly models and some layout, background layout. Um, And after a year, I was part of a big layoff at the end of uh, the season. So... Uh, I decided to take a few months off just to take classes and uh, 
and look around and see what was available. Turned out Disney was hiring. Uh, there had been a massive exodus of um, Disney animators with the Don Bluth uh, folks leaving at the end of Fox and the Hound. Um, and uh, so Disney was looking for new people to replace uh, some of those that had left with Don Bluth. Uh, so it was lucky timing on my part. I applied for a position uh, again as a trainee. Um, it was actually a cleanup trainee pos- uh, position that um, I was applying for. But I did get in. Um, so that was uh, beginning of 1982. Uh, and then by the end of uh, Cauldron, which came out in uh, the theaters in 1985, I had been promoted to animator. Uh, so that was actually a big break for me uh, personally. Um, um, the industry was kind of looking a little bleak. Um, uh, Cauldron was not widely well received, but uh, from then on, things started looking up. Um, uh, the next picture we worked on was uh, The Great Mouse Detective. It was uh, such a ray of sunshine at an otherwise gloomy studio. But uh, yeah, Ron and John um, uh, were really good to work with. Uh, first of all, they were animators in their own right, uh, uh, in addition to being excellent uh, storytellers. Um, so it was very easy working with them. They knew exactly uh, what they wanted uh, and could communicate it to the animators uh, uh, clearly. And um, also, um, uh, I worked closely. Uh, all the young animators actually at that time worked with Eric Larson, who was the last of the nine old men um, from the golden age of Disney animation uh, to be at the studio. So we pretty much uh, would just bring our scenes to Eric and he would critique them and offer um, suggestions for improving them. And he was very nice, such a wonderful uh, man um, and teacher. Uh, he wasn't mean, you know, <laughs> he would always be uh, uh, supportive and um, very positive with his um, comments. He would never tear you down, he would always just try to make your uh, work better. Um, so that was really nice. Uh, it was a big uh, part of part of the experience so and then that followed with oliver and company and i love oliver and company and i feel it doesn't get as much love and, and you don't get a chance to talk about animating francis and rita and they're oh, such yeah. fun characters you know two polar opposites but you know it, it's great to work with characters like that yeah i mo- mostly worked with francis uh, i did a couple of scenes with rita and rita was actually animated mostly by sean keller another uh, another young animator a uh, really talented animator. Uh, but the scene everybody remembers of Francis is the one where he emotes. He says, uh, my name is Francis, not Frank, not Frankie, Francis. And that was the scene that was actually animated by Andreas Deja. Um, he did that as an experimental scene. And uh, so we, we uh, uh, I uh, put it on model pretty much because, you know, the model evolved over time. But it was still pretty much his uh animation that wound up on the screen so <laughs> that's the one that everybody remembers but it was a fun character i really enjoyed um uh, i did all that stuff where he's emoting and you know they're staging that uh fake accident where he does his death scene uh so that was fun he was a fun character uh and you and you got another and, musical out of pocahontas so it, it's another game changer because it's a little bit more subdued in in personality and and songs of course you know um and you got to work on Chief Powhatan, and this is mm-hmm. a very this is a very key character in the film. Of course, it's Pocahontas's father, and you got to yes. work with Russell Memes. You know, he was yes, uh, I did. I was uh, in uh, Florida. I had just moved to Florida in 1994, right after Lion King, um, and I was originally supposed to move uh, go there to work on Mulan, which actually wound up coming out in 1998. So in the meantime, they asked me to work on Pocahontas, and so. Uh, I did supervise uh, Chief Powhatan, um, but uh, that I, I, my crew and I were in um, Florida um, working on the movie, uh, whereas most of the rest of uh, Pocahontas was done in Los Angeles. Uh, and so I was, uh, I didn't actually uh, meet Russell Means, the voice of uh, Chief Powhatan, till after the movie was done. Um, although you know we had a lot of the. Rec- uh, of course, we look, we listen to the audio recordings uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, but uh, I did meet him, and he was great. Uh, we did a, a press junket together. 
uh, Russell, myself, uh, Jim Pentecost, the producer, uh, we went to uh, th- did a three city weekend uh, press junket after the movie came out. Very impressive man. Um, and I, I had actually heard about Russell Means back in the seventies when I was a college student. Long before I even thought about going to animation, he was famous for. Uh, he and Dennis Banks were these uh, 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 Native American activists uh, who had a standoff with the uh, FBI uh, back in the 70s. So I, I'd heard his name for many, many, many years uh, <clears throat> in a completely different world, uh, totally outside of animation. Uh, so that was kind of interesting that uh, our paths actually crossed. I really enjoyed the 10 years I was in Florida. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, working on Leland Stitch. Uh, David and Pleakley are such um, contrasting characters. You know, Pleakley's an alien. He's very cartoony. Um, and, you know, he's completely different from the way a person would be, you know, in, in terms of animation. He had three legs, one eyeball. And uh, David was uh, pretty much a normal human being, a little bit more realistic. He was on uh, Lilo's older sister, Nani's boyfriend, sort of a surfer dude. It was kind of interesting going back and forth between the two of them. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I, I like a good challenge, you know, um, and they, doing David and Pleakley in, in the same movie was definitely a good challenge. You know, the, one of the other films that you moved on to do was The Princess and the Frog, which was another uh-huh. wonderful film. And you worked on Tiana's Parents. That's right. Um, James and uh, Eudora were my characters. Uh, and that was interesting because it was uh, hand drawn. It was uh, going back uh, uh, to, uh, to the uh, traditional style of animation and it was working with uh, Ron and John. Also, with Tiana's mom, she is voiced by Oprah Winfrey. So, That's did you correct. get to meet Oprah in person? No, or- I did not meet her in person. However, the next best thing, I met her on video. We were uh, doing a recording session of Eudora. Uh, and, you know, Oprah being very uh, busy, uh, she was in Chicago, and she was on the phone on the other end in Chicago, and we were in L.A., the directors and I, Ron and John and I, and we were on the phone on our end, too. Uh, and and also there was a video uh, monitor set up. So we were looking at each other. We were looking at Oprah, and Oprah was looking at us. So the directors, uh, Ron and John, introduced uh, me to Oprah and vice versa. And both rooms were kind of dark. So we were squinting at the cameras <laughs> and say, hello there. Uh, and kind of not sure if the other person saw us. But uh, yeah, it was so I kind of think I, I feel like I met Oprah. Uh, and yes, I did uh, look at a lot of the videos. I did my best. I uh, try to do justice to her voice recordings and everything. Uh, but I really enjoyed working on that movie. Uh, and Bill Schwab was the character designer that I that we worked with, who designed a lot of the characters. Uh, and he he pretty much uh, did 90% of what uh, Eudora looked like. I did the model, finished model sheets and everything, but he did most of the work for designing the character. Uh, and same thing with James. Um, Terrence Howard did the voice for James. And what have you been working on since? Because I know you left Disney in 2013. Are you working on any projects? Well, I've been uh, kind of semi-retired. Uh, I did work on a personal project with my, my sister's a writer. She lives in Oregon. And uh, my brother worked for many years at Air Products as a com- computer programmer, believe it or not. Um, and uh, we were all kind of retired. So we worked on a book project together. She's a writer, so she did a small children's alphabet book. And I did the drawings and my brother, who's a Photoshop expert, um, as well as a computer programmer, um, he did all the color. So we, it was a, a Kino siblings uh, <laughs> collaborative thing. But some, uh, and it turned out great. We were very happy, very pleased, very proud of how it turned out. People seemed to like it. Um, but uh, someday I'd like to do my own personal project, but I haven't quite figured out what it is yet. <laughs> I have a few things in the back of my head. So, But in the meantime, I've been doing uh, freelance, uh, not, not full-time, just, just a little bit of freelance here and there. I, I did do some uh, animation, but, um, uh, you know, animation is a lot of work, <clears throat> and it's usually something that's full-time. Uh, so I've been uh, lately uh, focusing more on um, character design, 
for little projects here and there. Still a fair amount of hand-drawn stuff. Uh, so there's work out there. Uh, people are keeping busy. It's a very, very busy, uh, very uh, interesting, uh, exciting time for the industry. There's a, a lot going on here in the U.S. and overseas. Uh, so exciting times for animation. Well, before we end our show, I have three Disney-themed questions I always ask Uh-oh. my guests. Oh, they're easy. They're not too hard. I call them the Fab Three. Okay. So we'll start with the okay. Donald one. The Donald one is, as a child, what Disney film was one of your favorites to see in the movie theater? Yeah, um, I actually only saw a couple of features, Disney features, but I would say uh, uh, Bambi and Pinocchio uh, were my favorites. Although, uh, as a child. Um, so, yeah, Bambi and Pinocchio. And our goofy question, what Disney character, besides the ones you have animated in the past, do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? Ooh, good question. Uh, hmm, it wouldn't be Jiminy because, you know, he'd be uh, critiquing too much, too much. Maybe Pinocchio would be a fun if I were a child, I, I think I'd enjoy Pinocchio because uh, we could go on adventures together. And our Mickey question, if I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what immediately comes to mind? Uh, Under the Sea. It's one of those, uh, the grass is always greener on the other side uh, kind of thing. Uh, maybe the opposite of that. It's uh, actually things are better at home <laughs> under the sea, you know. I couldn't agree more with you. And I have to thank you so much for coming on the show, Ruben. This has been a complete honor to chat with you today. And thank you for all your hard work over the years as an animator. It truly means the world to a lot of Disney fans. Yeah, it was nice chatting with you too, Tammy. I hope you. Uh, I wish you luck with uh, putting the show together. Thank you. And, and uh, thank you too for sharing everything with all the fans out there. Going down the body. Going down the body.